नमस्कार वेलकम टू वन मोर सेशन ऑफ ऑन रूरल मैनेजमेंट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस मोर ऑन रूरल टूरिज्म टुडे वी विल बी स्पेसिफिकली डिस्कसिंग एंड एक्सप्लोरिंग ऑन प्लानिंग एंड मैनेजिंग ऑफ रूरल टूरिज्म द प्लानिंग एंड मैनेजिंग एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ रूरल टूरिज्म इज बेसिकली कंसर्निंग विद मोर ऑफ द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट विच वी जनरली स्पीक इन द मैनेजमेंट एरिया स्पेशली फॉर द एम स्टूडेंट्स एंड द बी स्टूडेंट्स so we'll be focusing more from the principles of management which we have learnt if you have not learnt this will be a nice session with an aspect on rural tourism so let us explore it systematically what are the objectives of this lesson if you clearly see from the slide we are basically dealing as an overview on rural tourism management role of a project manager sustainable transport in the countryside impact of rural tourism and sustainable rural tourism this is a broad structure in which we will be discussing about it in the coming sessions but what is it exactly we are going to know the need for planning and management in rural tourism the what are the functions of a management role of a project manager the challenges and issues associated with rural tourism and the notion of sustainable tourism all these aspects will be discussed at length with case studies so that you can have a very good idea about how to implement this at a grassroots level especially at the village level so let's go to the next slide as we have discussed about it the entire thing we are going to know about planning and management functions project manager role the challenges and issues associated sustainable rural, rural tourism here if you see the slide carefully i have put this uh, image of pareto's principle i am sure most of you are aware of pareto's principle what basically it says is if we are got 100 customers it is only the 20% of that customers who give us the real business so that is what you need to tell it is the fact proven in a lot of businesses also irrespective of any business and rural tourism business is nothing different so you have to understand if the if there are 100 tourists who are coming it is really the 20% of the tourists who come whether they are foreign tourists or domestic tourists they give us the actual business in our rural areas we have to keep track of all the 100 but let us focus on building long term relationships with the 20% of the tourists so kindly keep this pareto's principle in mind always in whichever work you do in whichever department you do whether you are working in a government enterprise or an ngo or a private enterprise so please understand my dear friends the pareto's principle always works let us go to the next one what exactly is management in my definition management is if you spell it m a n a g e m e n n t management when i split it as manage men and t that is managing men time and resources that's one of the simplest and easiest definitions which i i have i won't say i have invented my professor taught me which i'm sharing it with you so what are exactly is a management management is a three tier activity the top tier centers around the determination of the objectives and the policies middle tier is concerned with the implementation of the policies through the assistance of the lower tier of the organization that is broadly classifies the three levels what are they just a brief no understanding the top level management consists of board of directors its chairman managing director or general manager or other key officers this is the ultimate source of authority entrusted with responsibility and conducting the affairs of the enterprise carefully what do they do basically judicious planning careful regulation arranging for effective execution and vigilant control so middle level management is concerned with the task of implementing the plans and policies chalked out by the top management it generally consists of heads of the department other executives you know who are attached in different departments so we are all the top level middle and the lower level it's all an integrated way they have to work typically we can say it's all about team management how the teams collaborate share information the communication is transparent accountability is there at every level so that the implementation happens at the grassroots level to the utmost satisfaction of the goal assigned it is very important to have a goal to what goal are we working towards it certain definitely certain enterprises whether in government or private they work without a goal what is your long term vision what is your short term vision what is the, what are the outcomes that you are going to decide about so these are the factors that play that come into play so let us understand them the objectives of management are can be classified as follows organizational 
the main objective of management is to make proper utilization of human and material resources so that it gives maximum advantage to the organization every management group strives to achieve these objectives what are the basic uh, objectives that we are trying to talk profit survival and growth and market share what is survival the basic objective of every organization is survival and perpetuity management must ensure survival through sufficient profits no profits no organization so profit is not an evil word profit is a good word provided how you manage it managing profits again is an art profit is the whole and sole objective of every business therefore management must enable the organization to earn maximum profits growth organizations always expect earning of adequate profits and a long survival for their business which in turn can lead to growth and expansion management must help in covering the uncovered aspects all risks meet future challenges and ensure growth and prosperity now that you are aware post covid scenario most of the organizations have taken hit and lot of employees are being retrenched a lot of attrition rate is at all time peaks across the globe so we need to understand that we can cover the risks which are which are you no know, can be foreseen but the kind of a chinese covid that had come in we cannot foresee that so it is here that we need to understand to the entire organizational objectives survives on survival skills profit making skills then the increasing the market share for our growth prospects we have to focus on all these elements any organization without which it is it becomes very difficult as charles darwin said survival of the fittest right so let's go to the next one again the classification deals with the objectives of management it says social objectives what are the social objectives of an organization it is to be using environment friendly methods and production quality methods to customers at reasonable price providing employment opportunities to people and basic amenities like schools hospitals and crash for employees that is one of the social aspect if an organization is there it has to take care of its employees when they whether they are working on a full time basis whether they are working on a part time basis the organization should be concerned about their staff if they are not concerned about their staff the organization is on a very shaky ground so you have to understand how many first important thing is to understand who are the staff who are available and who are in the right position that's what we discussed in the previous uh, session also where we told about staffing staffing is right person in the right job at the right time and doing the right thing i repeat staffing is right person in the right job doing the right thing at the right time so if they, we are not staffed properly the jobs the goals will go for a toss so that is why my dear friends social objective is very important to understand and taking care of the employees who are working in the organization next comes personal people join the organizations to fulfill their personal objectives and satisfy their basic needs of life what is the basic need of life survival expansion of the family taking care of their elders taking care of the children the school going kids other expenses involved they try to achieve their financial needs like salary and other incentives like bonus etc social needs like respect regard and recognition higher order needs growth and development promotions in order to bring harmony in organization management has to integrate personal goals with organizational goals when personal goal is integrated with organization goals that is where the organization we can say it is productive here i would like to share an important uh, aspect which i would like to say which i have evolved as a mantra which uh, life has taught me that mantra is iq that is intelligence quotient plus eq that is emotional quotient plus sq that is spiritual quotient is equal to hq that is happiness quotient that is my mantra for life live your passion totally you got one life to live live it fully every day every moment so it is here from the organizational perspective i say that in whichever company that you are working whether you are working in a multinational company whether you are working in a government organization or an ngo or a private company please you should be excited daily to go to work that you are giving your best and in the night when you sleep you should ask yourself that am i did i give my best today can i give my best tomorrow these are the simple questions that you need to ask within yourself are you happy going to work today 
please ask yourself and be honest with the replies. You know the answers. So always, if you want to be happy at work, I would say, please follow this mantra. You should be productive. You should be excited to come to work, whichever work that you are doing. You should be excited. And that creates a lot of positive energy within the people around you. They should be happy to receive you. So that is why, my dear friends, it is very important to merge the individual goals and the organizational goals. What is the what does the individual want as, for a long term basis? What does organization expects from the individual, the employee? We have to find a common point. We have to find a common ground. If we do not find a common point, if we do not find a find a common ground, the organization will perish. The individuals can go find some other jobs. They keep on doing job hunting, you know, job hunting everywhere. They are jumping from one job to another. Fine. It is the individual choice. What, what about the organizations? Its infrastructure, everything. So that is why I, I, I would like to request all the CEOs, all the top people who are on the top level of the management, please understand and take welfare as an important aspect for all the employees. And see, once employee is a happy, a happy employee is a very productive employee. Every day the CEO or a chairman or the top managing director should always ask himself that what should I do today to make my employees happy? At least a tap on the shoulder saying that yes, you did a good job. We can appreciate certain employees who have done a good job. And you just tap on the shoulder, yes, I liked you, your work was good. That really motivates an employee. His energy levels changes. When his energy levels becomes productive, it is useful for the organization. He takes ownership of the organization. 90 percent of the companies <coughs> today, uh, let me say, I can say I can go for another 5 percent more. 95 percent of the people who work in different organizations, whether it is government, private, NGOs, they do not own, own it. They think it is a job. I am going there just because I am getting some money. <coughs> what about the vision of the company? What about the mission? What is your role in achieving that goal? So, that is why my dear friends, please I request you kindly consider the last 5 minutes which I shared with you. What are the individual goals? Better salaries, better benefits, stability in employment, very important factor, safety at work, especially with uh, women around, quality of life at work, opportunity for growth, freedom to work, liberal leadership and pride of the organization. They should take pride in an organization in which they are working. Every employee should feel proud about the kind of work that he is doing or she is doing. It plays a very crucial role. Self-motivated employees are an asset to an organization. I cannot afford to lose a self-motivated employee at any point of time. If an employee is self-motivated, he has done 90 percent of the job for the organization. Imagine an entire organization of self-motivated employees. That is where the real magic happens. That is where the real profit comes in. That is where the survival is there. And that is where the market share increases. You check for the records, any company, when the market share increases, somewhere down the line, some particular level of management, some employee is doing that magic somewhere. That is 100 percent true and I am sure you know about it also. Organizational goals, sustainability, sustainable growth, profitability, productivity, quality in products and services, cost reduction, greater market share, new markets, conquering new customers, competitiveness, image and reputation. So, here we have to, everything is integrated. So, where the individual comes in, where the organization comes in, you know it. It is like a, in the maths, we call it the Venn diagrams. We have to find the common point where the organizational goals and individual goals meet. They should not be distinctive and separate from each other. I hope you understand this. So, same thing we have to plan when we are planning for the rural tourism centers. People should take up ownership of that village, ownership of the uh, handicrafts, products being manufactured there, the services being provided, how to improve quality of that. It is the quality that determines the long run. What is the significance of management? Why do people insist on you know to have proper managers? 
Management gives a proper direction for the accomplishment of common individual and organizational goals. Without management, all the resources like financial, material and human resources will be useless. Management puts all other resources into action and maximizes the objective of organization. Management makes an organization adaptable to the changing environment. The change in technology, taste of the people, change in the fashions and the change in the demand of the products all exert a great influence on the business. Management must be responsive to the future challenges. Management generates human values in the organization. It is men, not machines, materials and money that leads towards the accomplishment of organizational objectives. Here, I would like to share an uh, important uh, case study. Uh, in the Indian bank, um, banking industry, way back uh, in the early 90s, if I can say, at that was the time the computerization was being implemented. There was an all round insecurity among the banking employees, saying that you know their jobs might go. And there was a long strike for a period of more than two to three months during that time. Why? Because a lot of manual banking was happening. But when the change management had to be ushered in, the management had to understand how to do the, the transformational process. When we are trying to do about the transformational process, that is what we say in the management grid also. First, we have to unfreeze it, relax, then freeze it. So, what should we do first? Let us understand the process of the change management that is going to happen. And what are the processes that you need to implement? And what are the concerns of, or we can say grievances of the employees? Once we take that into consideration, ensure that their jobs will not be lost, they can be trained again, they can be using just not the manual way, we can go in for the software computerization also. So, the computerization of the banking system re really changed the entire economy. Today, earlier, the people who opposed the entire computerization of in the banking sector, today you see all the boards com fully computerized bank center. Now, if you see most of the banks have been merged and private banks are doing fantastic job and most of them are using ATMs which was not there during the 90s. Very few ATMs were there. Now, right now every nook and corner of the country we are having ATMs and the next important thing shifted to internet banking. From internet banking we have come down straight to mobile banking. So, this is a simple see the transformation that has happened with the use of technology, the changing the taste of the people. Earlier during our time, uh, during my childhood time, whenever somebody at the, when the first of the month that comes in, we used to really hate to go to the banks, to just to take the check and stand in the queue for one hour and then collect one you know a kind of a triangle kind of or a circular kind of a token, then again wait for one more hour to collect our money. This thing to save time for the consumer that is where the automation helps. People are looking to save their own time. Time is money. You save time, you save money. Simple. Nothing elaborate about it. So, that is where the entire computerization in the banking sector, it, it created a revolution in Indian business. Today, most of the people, you know, all of you definitely, I am sure all of you are having a mobile apps in your phone. I am sure you are doing internet uh, banking, mobile banking, yeah, especially you are driving, the, you, are, you know, you are using the UPIs also now, Google pay, phone pay, tell me where technology has not pervaded, everywhere. So, that is the change that we need to accept it. Even you go to remote rural areas also, first thing they will say, aapke paas phone pay hai kya, Google pay <laughs> definite or Paytm, all these things are changing. So, let us understand at the grassroots level what changes are there, what has happened, let us take it further. So, that is the case study which I wanted to share, the computerization in the Indian banking sector. Today, changing completely changed, it is totally dynamic now. Now, a very important case study which I would like to share it with you, I will tell you the answer later. Vijay, who hails from Shimla, gets a job as a manager of a premium 5 star resort in Shimla. His boss tells him that there are few minor issues at the resort that he needs to sort it out before they relaunch the new resort in a month. He gives him a free hand and budget to do the needful. Upon arrival, Vijay finds the entire resort in a mess. See the picture. The kitchen is dirty, 
the chef is not available, the housekeeping staff are on leave and the duty manager has resigned. It is left with two front office staff and a security guard. So, what should Vijay do? You tell me, I am giving you two options. Options, Vijay should resign and leave. What will you do in the, if you are in the position of Vijay? Second one, Vijay should do all the cleaning, cooking and all the entire operations of the resort by himself. What is your answer? Okay, now that you know the answer, I am sure most of you have gone with A, some, or some of you with B. This is the answer. The answer is, Vijay should prioritize his objectives. What is it? Planning, organizing, staffing, directing and coordinating and controlling. These are the five important principles a manager should follow. That is what we say management. Managing men, time and resources. How? Through planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating and controlling. So, I hope now you understood that Vijay should relook at prioritize his goals first, do the correct kind of staffing, then once the staff comes in, he has to do the new hire orientation, allocate certain roles for everybody, because he has been given a free budget also. Always keep a backup staff possible, contingency planning and communicating with them, then directing them day to day affairs, how to manage the resort with each of indep independent team which is available, then run the entire resort in a smooth way. I have just given you a simple example of a resort, it can be an NGO, it can be any organization. The team should be there in the place, the right team in the right place, job done. So, after the case study, let us go to the next one. So, what are the functions of a management? Planning is the first and foremost function of a management. It is termed as the nucleus of the management. Why? Because defining goals, establishing a strategy for achieving those goals and developing plans to integrate and coordinate activities. That is to sum it up the entire process of management. That is why government of India has formulated a national action plan for tourism. You can visit the site of ministry of tourism, it has got an entire plan what it needs to do and how they are trying to develop all different destinations. Last time we have shared that the new plan has come up for lighthouse tourism. Now, they are going to connect all the lighthouses in the country which is on the coastal part of India and that will they will develop their resorts around it. So, that is a new concept that has come into place that is called lighthouse tourism. So, elements of organizing including group activities, allocation of duties, fixation of responsibilities, delegation of authority and establishing relationship between different components of authority. Typically, when we say an organization, we, what do we say uh, an organization with small or big or this thing, standard thing, it will start with the finance department, next comes the marketing, next comes the HR, then comes the IT department, legal or production or transportation. All these things are integrated way and every department should have a head for it. Under the head will have an assistant manager, under the assistant manager there will be an executive level. So, everybody knows how, what is their job responsibility and when you are recruiting them, you have to be very specific whom to recruit and why are you recruiting them, what is the job specification. Once the guy comes to attend the interview, you have to give him the job description, this is the job that is there, can you do it or not. If you are a fresher, uh, you can then take them as an intern or a trainee. Somebody who is experienced, he already knows the job, but it is the job of the HR to tell them again that this is the job description in our company. Are you ready to take it up? Once he agrees, then you hire the particular person. Once you hire the person, then you are giving him the entire allocation of the responsibility. Then that particular person should be reporting to the concerned particular head. Typically, let us say in the resort, we have got lot of food and beverages. We have got an F and B manager, we have got an assistant F and B manager, then we have got a chef and somebody who takes care of the materials, stores, inventory. All these things should be following in a sequential logical flow chart design. So, that is why I am sharing this you with the example of hospitality industry. So, that is why my dear friends, please understand there should be any organization should have proper departmental heads, under the departmental heads there should be proper in the assistant managers working, under the assistant managers there should be a proper executive level who are working, under the executive definitely freshers or interns can be taken. So, let us go to the next one. So, here we are trying to say about staffing, human resources as the most precious and the biggest asset of an organization. Staffing involves the recruitment, selection, 
training, placement and promotion of the employees. It needs manpower planning, job analysis and other staff function. It is a continuous process. It is not a one time process. So, that is what I shared right man for the right job at the right time and doing the right thing. That is exactly the meaning of staffing. Lot of people say you are HR salary kar do, payroll de do, PF de do. That is not the way. If you are a serious person, you are doing re really running an organization, you should have a proper structure to it. Proper accounts manager should be there, finance manager should be there. The salary strip should be given to all the employees. When you work in a structured way, people international organizations, all the people will appreciate. The government also looks at your uh, audits. So, that is why it is very important to see that when the work is being done in a structured way, things fall in place. That organization is a healthy organization. Next, coming to directing. Directing means telling people what to do and seeing what they do it to their best of their ability. Very important. Directing means telling people what to do and seeing what they do to their best of their ability. Because this should happen when, when you are recruiting a person. When you are recruiting a person, you have to tell especially the HR people, the team or the HR executive or the manager who is recruiting for the final round of interview has to tell again, reiterate that this is the job expected, these are the job expectations from you, can you deliver the goods? Take the acceptance, allow the employee to slowly sink into the company, understand the new company, new environment, it will take certain time, give him that kind of a buffer time to get into the company. Then you tell him what is the buffer time that you are giving him, maybe one month or one and a half month, 45 days to get into the company. After that, you have to show results. So, that is why when you are trying to talk about directing this place, it, it initiates an organized action and breathes life into an organization. Next, coming to coordination. Coordination is the art of achieving harmony of individuals and group efforts for the achievement of common goals. Coordination is regarded as a culmination of the entire managerial process. Here, let us say typical example, let us say we take the example of uh, Maruti Suzuki, Maruti company. A Maruti company produces so many different varieties of cars, different brands of cars, different models, different sizes. Imagine if you visit the production plant of a Maruti, you will know what happens there. Somebody is manufacturing the glass, somebody is manufacturing the steering, somebody is manufacturing the tires. The entire thing has to come in a sequential order, fall in place. Then only a car really comes out of a particular body shop or particular factory outlet. Then the entire process, it goes to the retail outlet. So, all these things requires lot of coordination from the top management, from the middle management, from the lower management again to the factory level, production level, again directly to the retailer level and not only that then getting the feedback from the customer. This entire cycle if you see, it has to be managed very carefully. Now, what are we saying exactly in the functions of management? Motivation, motivation in the last class we have read, but still for the purpose we have understood and discussed, still we will just go through it again. Motivation is an activity by which management motivates the workers of an enterprise to do more and better work. It is a stimulating force that inspires all employees of an organization to work for the better for the organization. It is a psychological technique of executing the plans and policies through the efforts of others. So, here when we are trying to talk about motivation that we have discussed it, you need to be motivated. The top person, whether he is a chairman, managing director, CEOs or a chief technology officer has to be a highly motivated, self motivated individual. But remaining just being self motivated at the top level, it does not occur much. You need to transfer your energy, your passion, your enthusiasm to the next level, similarly so on and so forth. That is what we call motivation plays a key role. Next, controlling. Controlling is termed as a yardstick for measuring the performance of an organization. It is a process of examining and evaluating the work turned out to be subordinates in different departments. So, what basically we say, typically in a HR we roll, we, what we say, we say it 360 degree performance appraisal. You take a new recruit, you hire him for a period, then he, he is under the training period. After the training period, you are controlling him and understanding him, whether he has done the job effectively and efficiently. After he has done the job, then the chances are that he has done a good job, he will be promoted, he will be taken on a confirmed level of service 
with the P f graduate E s i so on and so forth. Suppose he is not done properly and you find that he is not suitable to an organization, then what do you do at that time we have got something called exit interviews. You sit down with them and talk with him and saying what is the problem, would you like to give him one more chance, would you like to give her one more chance to prove himself or herself another 6 months down the line probation period, it differs from company to company. Because the trained person who is a trained person in an organization is an asset, we cannot afford to lose an asset. When we lose an asset, the entire organization will be in chaos. So, that is why the top level management should see that they retain their employees. Attrition levels which is very high that has to be reduced, phased out. I am not saying employees will not go, they will go. But what is the management doing, the top management doing to stop the employees from going? Because the trained asset goes out, it is a loss for an organization. So, that is why if you see the image, it is time that we shift from boss versus leader. What does a boss do? He drives the employees, he depends on authority, he inspires fear, he says always I, he places blame for the breakdown, knows how it is done, he uses people, he, he takes credit and he commands. This is what a boss does, what does a leader do? He coaches the team and he works on the goodwill of the people, he generates enthusiasm. He always says we, he will never say I, there is a difference, that is what we call it as team management. He fixes the breakdown, he shows how it is done, that is where the competency based management important. It is just not repairing the situation just because you know it, but how did you train the next employee, how to manage it in, in the event of the crisis. You may come, you may not come, you may get sick also, but they should be number 2 who is be ready to do the job. But 90 percent of Indian man, uh, attitude and the mentalities, they want the entire work to be dependent on them. They want to run an organization like this, they want to run a department like this. Moment they go away, the, the, or the department or organization should collapse. Is that healthy? Think about it. That is very, very important my dear friends. You have to make your organization very healthy. You have to make your all your employees own the organization, that, that, that there lies a successful manager, there lies a successful leader. So, what are the two th important things? Two things in life you are in total control is one your attitude and your effort, rest it is not within us. What is your attitude to the work and how did you do it? And what happens here? The main task of a tourism professional, very important, please pay attention is expected to produce results as follows. First one, provide a purposeful direction to the organization for attainment of its objectives, maintain a firm's efficiency for profit generation which is essential for growth and survival, anticipate and prepare for a meeting the challenges of increasing competition. There will be different rivals who will be coming up. Build human organization by creating team spirit and teamwork. Without team spirit and teamwork, it is very difficult to run a middle level to a large level organization. So, that is why you can run a small organization you know on authority and fear, but not a bigger organization. Retain talent and postpone obsolescence in the organization. Protect the interest and welfare of the employees to gain their confidence and inculcate a sense of loyalty. How do you inculcate a sense of loyalty you tell me? How do you inculcate a sense of loyalty in a person? What is that one word that is a key word that we can say regarding loyalty? When you build trust, trust is a very important factor in the long term relationships. The respect, the trust and respect brings in loyalty anywhere in any field, whether it is personal or professional what is most important for a person to have integrity is respect and trust. Maintain cordial relations with various segments of society by fulfilling the needs of the society. Keep oneself updated on internal and external information pertaining to the organization. So, all these things keep on, keeps on changing. When we say you know keep all the internal and external information, see the way the technology is changing, see the way how people are interacting see the way the entire process has changed. 
just I am talking about a decade ago, things were not as fast as we are having today. The social media sites everywhere, all the mobile apps everywhere, right? So, let us go to the next one. Coming to an important topic called role of a project manager. What is the role of a project manager? A role consists of the behavior patterns expected of an individual within a social limit. A manager is the role model for all the employees of the organization. So, that is why when you are at the top of the level, when, when you are a CEO or a managing director or a chairman for a particular organization, you should be a proper role model for the other employees. If you are not a proper role model, then the real conflict begins. What happens here? Let us understand the interpersonal roles. The interpersonal roles refers to those managerial roles that involve people and other duties that are ceremonial and symbolic in nature. There are three types of interpersonal roles. One is figurehead role, second one is a leader role, the third one is a liaison role. Figurehead role, manager performs a role as a symbolic head and accordingly he is obliged to perform several routine duties of legal and social nature. This typical activities include greeting visitors, signing legal documents, that is a figurehead role. Leader's role, as a leader of the department, the manager gives direction to his subordinates to fulfill the assigned goals and objectives. He is responsible for their motivation and activation, staffing and training, goal setting, guidance, reviewing the progress of the work. Then comes the liaison role. The manager is required to maintain contact with the sources of uh, that provide valuable information which include individuals or groups outside the manager's unit and may be inside or outside the organization. So, here my dear friends, very very important to understand these three particular informational roles, interpersonal roles, figurehead role, leader role and liaisonal roles. We can do a small activity which is mentioned here, discuss among your friends and fill in the blanks with suitable application necessary. For the mail, what do you use? Generally, Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook, earlier we were using Hotmail, but right now most of the people are shifted to Gmail. Then meeting the online meetings that we conduct, maybe we start with Google Meet, Zoom and so on. There are so many other things, Microsoft Teams that is also available. Then sheets, obviously Google Sheets, Excel Sheets, then slides, PowerPoint presentation which you are seeing, which is available in different office uh, suits are available. The role of a project manager as an informational roles. This role includes the following types of managerial roles that involve receiving, collecting and disseminating information. Monitor. A manager is spanning the boundaries of the organization trying to get information from outside through other sources. He is trying to seek all the information, he monitors the entire information that is coming in. Disseminator. Disseminator is expected to transfer ins information received from outside to the subordinates, to all the members of the organization in a factual way. So, that is very important to understand. So, given the uh, kind of information the manager is there, so disseminator plays a key role what is the vision of the company, what is the mission of the company, what our, what our rivals are doing, what he is taking a plan of action, it is very, very important. I am not saying you have to share everything, but at least whatever you are sharing, see that it is transparent, accountable. Next comes spokesperson, spokesman. Manager represents the organization to the outsiders by performing a role of a spokesperson. Anything to do with the organization, its marketing of its, its branding of its, anything positive or in unfortunate situations, some un, uh, unfortunate incidents that happen, it is a spokesperson who comes forward and tells what exactly is the issue. So, these are the roles of informational roles of a project manager. Now, comes the decisional roles. The decisional roles is four decisional roles which include those of managerial roles. One is entrepreneur, next one is disturbance handler, third one is resources allocator and fourth one is negotiator. Entrepreneur, which I need not insist all of you know who is an entrepreneur, who knows it about his risks, who knows when to enter and who, you know, who knows when to exit in an, any enterprise. Disturbance handler, yes, there are conflicts that happen. So, always remember there are four situations in a disturbance. Conflict, I cannot say disturbance is a very strong thing, I will say conflict management. We have got four stages. One is lose, lose, I lose, you lose, not favorable. The next one, I win, you lose, not favorable to the other guy. I lose, you win, not acceptable to me. And the last one, I win, you win. So, that is where you need to arrive at one particular, somebody has to come 
four levels up, somebody has to come four levels down. That is where the meeting ground happens. That is where things are in harmony. So that is why it is very important to understand. Then resources allocator, you should know whom to allocate, when, where and why. That person key roles, you should know what his job description is all about. Then comes negotiator, how to negotiate, typically we will say HR person, any senior manager negotiating with the trade and the union and the local people also, you should be a successful negotiator. You should understand, go into the minds of the other people to understand what is it that will bring them onto the table to feel that they are also winning the situation, they are also winning on the issue. Without that it is difficult to be a negotiator. Now comes the skills of a manager. Skills of the manager is broadly shown in the slide, conceptual skills, human relation skills, technical skills, communication skills, administrative skills, leadership skills, problem solving skills, decision making skills. All these things are very, very important to be an effective and an efficient manager. Somebody can be effective, but they need not be efficient. Somebody are efficient, but they need not be effective. So, this is very important to understand. Everybody will not ha have everything in 100 percent. All this combination of the skills which we have just now discussed. It is a combination, you know, it is a permutation and combination, work out, working out to the best and optimum level of it. Now, coming to a case study, very important, very nice one. Of course, most of you have read it in the papers, but I have not the original names taken. I am just reading it out to you. Rakesh is the manager at Hotel Grandier at Dharmashala. He was contacted by a friend who was the hospitality head for Dharmashala Cricket Association, who were hosting the India-Australia test match. Rakesh gave a special discount and arranged to receive the cricket teams. His hotel had a policy of not entertaining the outside foods to their guests. Clear? During the rest day, one ex-cricketer bought home-cooked food and served the present players who played under him. This came to the notice of Rakesh. He straight away went to the Indian cricket manager and politely requested them not to have the food brought by the ex-Indian cricketer. The present captain came to know about this, was angry and entire team, Indian team left the hotel. Rakesh informed them that he will pack the same food and can serve them at the stadium, but not inside the hotel. This was refused by the captain of the team. Now, the question is, was Rakesh correct? How could he have salvaged the situation? How should he handle the media from the breaking news syndrome? You share your answers on this particular case study. Then comes the skills of a manager, social media skills. It is evident a manager today, that today's manager has to manage social media properly and effectively regularly requesting the tourist, foreign or domestic to give their feedback, asking them to post their the videos or photographs taken during the visit and giving a rating to their particular resort or to the services that has been provided. All these things helps in increasing the business, especially to the rural tourism business. So, social media is an important tool which I would request all the rural tourist managers to employ. Learn and train the other employees too. Here, let us watch a beautiful video from Education Leaves, which is of just 5 minutes duration. It is totally on the managerial skills. Thank you very much for watching this video. Jai Hind.